예, 카오스 재단 한국 뇌 연구원 그리고 이브로가 함께 기획한, 기획한 특강 뇌 속으로 오신 여러분들을 진심으로 환영합니다. 저는 오늘의 진행을 맡게 된 한국 뇌 연구원의 주재열입니다. 가을 바람이 완연한 오늘이죠. 어제까지만 해도 바람이 쐬고 비도 많았는데 오늘 저녁은 정말 가을을 느낄 수 있는 아주 상쾌한 저녁입니다. 이렇게 평일 저녁 늦은 시간에도 불구하고 여러분들이 많이 참석해 주시고 그리고 많은 관심을 가져주셔서 정말로 다시 한번 감사드립니다. 자, 혹시 여러분 들어오시기 전에 IBRO 즉 이브로라는 보라색 포스터를 좀 많이 보셨나요? 이브로는 1961년 그때 출범하여 4년마다 세계 뇌신경과학자들이 서로 모여서 지식을 공유하는 총회입니다. 아시아에서는 영광스럽게도 대한민국 대구에서 두, 번째, 두 번째로 열리게 되었습니다. 이브로는 여러분에게 뇌과학을 소개할 기회를 마련하기 위해 카오스재단 그리고 한국뇌연구원과 함께 여러분을 찾아뵙게 되었습니다. 자 그럼 지금부터 그 브레인쇼 뇌 속으로를 시작하도록 하겠습니다. 자 오늘의 주제는 뇌 속으로입니다. 자 여러분 뇌 속으로 만약에 여러분들이 여행을 하시게 된다면 어디로 여행을 하고 싶으세요? 아까 설명에도 나왔듯이 우리 뇌의 대부분을 차지하고 있는 대뇌? 아니면 운동을 담당하는 작은 어린아이의 주먹만한 우리 뇌 뒤에 위치한 손뇌 또는 우리의 소중한 기억을 저장하고 또 꺼내어주는 그런 해마? 자 오늘 첫 번째 강연 주제는 아주 매우 흥미롭습니다. 강연 주제는 이온 채널의 발견과 기능 그리고 의학 및 양리학에서 이온 채널의 역할입니다. 자 여러분 그럼 이온 채널이라고 하면 가장 먼저 떠오르시는 게 무엇일까요? 자, 자, 네 맞습니다. 여러분도 운동 많이 하시고 드시는 이온 음료입니다. 게토 땡땡땡, 포카 땡땡땡땡땡 이런 음료들을 많이 드시죠? 이렇게 땀으로 빠져나간 필수 전해질을 보충해주고 우리 몸의 전해질 균형을 유지함을 유지하기 위함이죠. 이렇게 우리 몸에 대표적인 이온은 어떤 것들이 있을까요? 자, 혈액 속 산소를 운반하는 철 이온들이 있고 칼륨과 함께 신경 전달에 관여하는 나트륨 이온도 있습니다. 그리고 우리가 아주 잘 알고 있듯이 뼈와 치아를 구성하며 심장 박동에 관여하는 칼슘 이온도 존재하고 있고요. 자, 이런 이온들이 신경세포 사이를 자유롭게 다닐 수 있는 통로를 우리는 이온 채널이라고 부릅니다. 이런 이온들이 원활하게 들어오고 나가기 위해 이런 이온 채널은 세포막의 단백질의 형태로 어, 존재하고 있습니다. 자, 오늘 강연하신 에르빈 네어 교수님은 이런 세포체에 이온 통로가 있다는 것을 세계 최초로 발견하시고 그 공로를 인정받아 1991년 노벨 의학 생리학 아, 생리 의학상을 수상하셨습니다. 자 오늘 이온 통로의 세계로 안내해 주실 네오 교수님을 큰 박수로 맞이해 주시기 바랍니다. 
250 years ago, the Italian researchers, scientists, Luigi Galvani and also Alessandro Volta, in particular Luigi Galvani, uh, found out, demonstrated that a muscle, a frog muscle, can be made to twitch when the nerve is stimulated by an electric shock. So this was uh, great news, uh, 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 created a lot of uh, commotion, and of course, people at that time didn't really know what it is about, what is electricity. Uh, but the finding was that uh, somehow sparks, um, um, uh, electric shocks, can induce uh, movement in the body. Hundred years later, the famous Spanish neuroanatomist Ramón y Cajal made these beautiful drawings uh, which showed that our brain is made up of these filigrane structures, which we now call neurons. And we now know, as already shown in the, in the introductory video, that the brain is a network of a million times a million such neurons which are connected with each other uh, via synapses, each, um, on average, each neuron receiving input from 1,000 to 10,000 uh, other cells. Um, Ramon y Cajal already developed ideas about the signal flow, uh, how signals, say, from the uh, retina in the eye would uh, um, uh, be passed on into the central nervous system. And if you look into his drawings, you see uh, in many places these little arrows which show what his idea about signal flow was. And we must concede he was mostly right in spite of the fact that he gained all his knowledge, his ideas, just from looking through the microscope onto dead and fixed uh, tissue. Of course, Ramon y Cajal didn't know what these signals were, but around the same time, there was a, a physiologist in Berlin by the name of Julius Bernstein, and he built this complicated electromechanical machine with which he could uh, record uh, rapid fluctuations in voltage. Uh, and the remarkable thing is that he already was able to resolve such fluctuations which last only for a thousandth of a second, maybe one or two milliseconds, uh, which, as we know now, is uh, the action potential or nerve impulse. Julius Bernstein also developed his membrane theory, which says that each cell is surrounded by a membrane which uh, separates the inside from the outside electrically. Um, I mean, both in the inside and the outside are electrically conducting fluids, as uh, already alluded to, I think, uh, before. And the membrane separates inside from outside, just like an insulator separates the core of a cable uh, from the rest. And his theory was that the electrical signals, the action potential, uh, develops across the membrane. Now, 50 years later was a great breakthrough in the understanding of what happens during the action potential through the work of British physiologists Hodgkin and Huxley, who uh, performed experiments on the giant nerve fiber of a squid uh, when they were able to demonstrate that if you depolarize the membrane, that you can uh, record a sequence of first inward currents carried by sodium ions, which make the inside positive of the nerve membrane, followed by delayed uh, uh, potassium currents which flow to the outside because potassium is highly concentrated in the inside, so which then brings back the potential to uh, um, uh, resting level. They cast these uh, 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 waveforms into differential equations and were able to show that a structure of this kind with a membrane with these properties is able to propagate an electrical impulse uh, along its axis. So this was about the 
a, a, a state of knowledge when I, as a student, became interested in these electrical signals and was lucky to enter the laboratory of Dieter Lux, a physiologist in Munich. And uh, uh, he um, um, uh, gave me a, CSD, uh, a PhD project uh, record for recording voltages um, from neurons, giant neurons of the snail. Uh, and this is a recording from my own thesis, which I think shows very nicely the generation of an action potential on the basis of Hodgkin-Huxley theory. Namely, what I did here, I recorded voltage between inside and outside uh, with a conventional microelectrode, and uh, one could inject positive current into the cell, uh, um, uh, leading to a depolarization to more positive voltage, which however at the end of the injection, which is here, decayed back. If, unless a certain threshold of voltage depolarization was crossed, uh, and what happens then when this threshold is crossed, uh, the uh, uh, sodium influx starts, as shown by Hodgkin Huxley, sodium enters the cell, makes the inside more positive, um, but followed by potassium current, which is an outward current, which brings the potential back to baseline. So, um, it was well known that this, the action potential is a consequence of permeability changes in the membrane, but the big question at the time war, was, what is the molecular mechanism of these permeability changes? Hodgkin Huxley already described their findings in terms of gates which open and close, but there were many other ideas around at the time. Many people objected, arguing that simple gates cannot be sp so specific for ions, so that uh, at one time only po uh, sodium ions are, are permeable, at other time only po uh, potassium ions. Um, now, we, and when I say we, this is Bert Zackmann, with whom I share the Nobel Prize, and myself, um, ask the question, can we um, prove the Hodgkin-Huxley concept about these gates opening and closing by demonstrating that um, there are, you can measure currents which change in a step-like fashion when such channels open and close. Um, so, um, um, this was a nice idea, but we had a problem. The problem was that all methods available for measuring current had a uh, intrinsic noise of a few tenths of a nanoamp. Uh, and we wanted to measure currents in the picoamp range. So, uh, uh, what you see here is an arrow indicated the, the, the quantity current on a logarithmic scale. You know, a light bulb has typically one ampere, uh, electronic circuits have uh, typically milliamps, and so on. Um, so this was the 10 to the minus 9th nanoamp was the kind of um, um, resolution limit and we wanted to measure things which are 100 times smaller. So we had to come up with a new method. And the new method was following a very simple idea. Um, the idea was that instead of pushing a microelectrode into a cell to measure currents over the whole cell, um, we should just place a pipette filled with electrolyte touchingly onto the surface of the cell, trying to isolate electrically a patch of membrane. That's why, uh, where the name uh, patch clamp comes from. And if we were lucky, and uh, if there was uh, one of these pores or one of these gates sitting on this membrane, uh, uh, opening and closing, we might be able to record uh, such currents with a sensitive amplifier. And, I mean, the idea is simple. There were, of course, a lot of technical problems uh, to be solved, but eventually we were lucky that we could uh, see such stepwise ups and downs um, of current, which um, represent here 
the opening and closing of so-called acetylcholine channels uh, at the neuromuscular junction. So this is not, not uh, voltage-dependent channels which underlie the, the nerve action potential, but um, uh, uh, ion channels which are activated by neurotransmitter. Um, a few years later, we uh, were successful in improving the math method uh, very much. Uh, so after some time, we could measure very clearly this up and down. At that time also, biochemists had advanced to the point that they were able to isolate a membrane protein, the so-called acetylcholine receptor, from um, muscle of electric organ. Uh, and they could show that this is a pentameric pro uh, a protein, which has uh, with two subunits which have binding sites for acetylcholine. And what obviously happens is, if acetylcholine binds uh, to these sites, then there is a conformational change in the protein, uh, opening a passageway for um, uh, ions. So what you see here, this up and down, is basically the uh, time course of uh, 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 conformational changes of switching uh, in these channels between open and close. Okay, um, with this improved method, now we could also uh, go back to the question of voltage-dependent ion channels, and this was a, a, a recording done by Frederick Sigworth in my lab, uh, who was able to uh, um, uh, culture, uh, to, to get recordings from muscle cells. Muscle cells, like nerve cells, have electrical excitability in the sense that they can generate an action potential to induce uh, contraction. And uh, what Fred Sigmund did is he depolarized the membrane and then he could see upon the repetitive uh, um, um, uh, cycles of this, he could see that shortly after the uh, onset of the depolarization, there were very often these little blips of invert current. If he then uh, 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 took the average of many of these recordings, he uh, got a kind of transient invert current, just like uh, the currents recorded by Hodgkin Huxley. So this then was proof that both electrical and chemical excitability is mediated by discreetly switching uh, ion channels. So with these results, we had reached our goal, uh, and it may have been that it was the end of the story. But as very often in research, that reaching one goal, answering one question, um, opens up a number of um, uh, new questions, and in our case, um, the fact that we had a method which was 100 times more sensitive than existing methods, and that this method then spread uh, 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 out and, and was used by hundreds of researchers uh, uh, um, uh, uh, throughout, um, led to surprises, namely a first surprise that ion channels are not restricted to what's called, what was used to be called excitable tissue, uh, but that um, uh, basically all, in all places in our body, in all cell types, you can find uh, ion channels which uh, subserve a, a variety of different uh, purposes. Um, for instance, just for ex by example, in the heart, you have an action potential and an electrical potential, which is very much like this, the nerve action potential, except that it has a broad shoulder in order for the heart muscle to be able to contract. And uh, just the generation of this waveform requires four different types of potassium channels, in addition to the sodium channels and calcium channels, which are more or less the excitatory principle. Um, in the atrium, another part of the heart where, where the heart contraction starts, there are even uh, um, uh, quite a few more uh, types of ion channels, such that the rhythm of the heart, the contraction, can be 
um, regulated, uh, uh, finely tuned uh, by the autonomous uh, nervous system. Um, second surprise was that ion channels are prime targets for drugs, for pharmaca. And what you see here is one example, which uh, is more or less a classical example, and it's not so much a surprise, since it was known that there is a class of substances, uh, uh, the trendibine is one of, one, one, um, uh, of these substances, which are called calcium antagonists, because uh, it was a, were, were drugs which had been in use for quite some time, which doctors prescribed in order to lower blood pressure. And uh, there was substantial evidence that the action of these drugs is to reduce the calcium influx. Now, my colleague Harald Reuter in Bern was very lucky uh, a few times when studying um, muscle cells isolated from heart, so-called cardiomyocytes, that he had a patch which just one uh, uh, channel of a certain kind uh, uh, on it, uh, namely a calcium permeable channel which is activated by voltage and actually responsible for the calcium influx into the muscle which triggers the contraction. And what you see here is that under control conditions, when he depolarized the membrane, the channel just uh, fluctuated open close in a very uh, 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 succession. But under the influence of this substance nitrendipine, the fluctuations were much rarer and shorter. Uh, correspondingly, the average calcium influx was um, uh, uh, lower and uh, which led to, uh, to weakened contraction and also to less uh, tone in the vessels because this channel is also found in the, um, uh, 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 in the, in the vessel walls. Okay, so another example, um, um, uh, memantine is a drug, the second most prescribed drug for ameliorating the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. It is not a cure, but it helps patients to cope better with the disease. It is a blocker of uh, so-called NMDA-type glutamate channels. Glutamate channels are the prime excitatory channels in uh, the nervous system, and they, they, the receptors for glutamate come in various flavors, and uh, one type is the NMD, called the NMDA type, and this is blocked by this uh, uh, drug. And what the uh, people who developed this drug assured me that patch lamp studies were essential in understanding its action and in getting the substance to the point where it was approved as a drug by the Food and Drug Administration. Another approved drug is substance VX707, uh, known as uh, uh, drug Calideco. It is a drug for cystic fibrosis, a disease where uh, the transport of chloride is perturbed in many organs and which often le leads to um, uh, the death of children in a relatively young age. So this substance, VX770 um, boosts the um, action of the so-called um, cystic fibrosis transmembrane regulator, a, um, um, a channel or transporter which mediates chloride flux uh, in the body. Now, I uh, listed here that it is uh, a so-called genotype-specific drug for personalized medicine. Uh, what this means, I will come back in a moment after discussing uh, the next surprise, namely that defects in ion channels, mutations in ion channels cause diseases. And um, um, uh, these are uh, many, many diseases. I've just listed a few of them. 
um, includes arrhythmias of the heart, several muscle diseases, certain forms of epilepsy, uh, uh, type 2 diabetes, neonatal diabetes, I will come back to that in a minute, the cystic fibrosis, which uh, I have already mentioned. And this is no, no surprise because 200 of our 30,000 genes are now known to code for ion channels and of course uh, mutations in these channels which happen spontaneously or are transferred from uh, parent to child um, 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 lead to uh, such diseases. Now coming back to one second to um, this uh, Calideco, it is specific for a fraction of patients only. So the cause of the disease of cystic fibrosis is a mutation in this uh, 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 transporter. However, of course, mutations can be in many different places and depending on where the mutation is, um, the um, uh, a molecule may be just weakened in its action or else be modified in a way that it doesn't even reach the plasma membrane after it has been made inside the cell. It, um, also some or most mutations cause the protein to be stuck in the um, uh, endoplasmic reticulum and never reach the um, uh, uh, limiting membrane. And, of course, a drug which boosts the action of this molecule cannot help when the molecule is basically not there but has been degraded. So, in, in this sense, it is a, a very a, a, an example of a, of a, a, a genotype-specific um, 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 drug uh, which is, can be easily understood. Okay. So, um, around 2,000 of our 30,000 genes code for ion channels. This is illustrated here in this uh, kind of evolutionary tree for channels. And um, uh, you can see that there are many, many potassium channels. I mean, when we started our research, uh, uh, we thought there was one channel for sodium influx, another one channel uh, type for uh, potassium outflux, but you see there are many of them um, uh, voltage gated. There are many types of channels which are opened by uh, the neurotransmitters, AMPA, uh, glycine, acetylcholine, and so on. There are new classes of channels which uh, 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 were completely unknown before uh, the era of the, of the patch clamp. In particularly, there is this class of so-called trip channels, which I think I will come um, um, uh, back. Yes, um, uh, with a somewhat uh, surprising role of channels, namely in the sensation of heat and cold. Um, in our skin, there are a number of receptors for touch, for pain, uh, for many different modalities. In particular, also, there are um, a nerve endings which sense heat temperature, and they do this by uh, specialized channels which are localized in the nerve endings which open and close in a temperature-dependent fashion. Um, so, all of these channels are of this family of so-called TRIP channels. The name TRP derives from the fact that um, um, uh, the first representative of this class of channels was uh, found in the eye of insects where it mediates a so-called transient receptor potential, a light response which um, uh, is part of the, of, of the vision uh, of insects. So, but this family has, um, meanwhile, about 25 to 30 
members, and some of these members, which are listed here, are sensitive to temperature, and their physiological role is to tell us whether something is warm or, 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 or cold. So there is trip A1, which opens uh, between 0 and 10 degrees. There is trip V2, which uh, senses only, uh, uh, opens only in noxious heat. There is trip V1, who spans the range of hot temperature. Um, together, these channels convey the whole range of uh, physiological temperatures. Now, I promise the surprise. The surprise comes when uh, researchers studied these channels in more detail and found that it's not only temperature which um, um, uh, opens and closes these channels, but also certain substances. And uh, if you look at the range of these substances, I think it becomes immediately clear uh, why, for instance, you f um, feel hot when you eat hot chili, because the substance uh, in uh, uh, this uh, uh, spice, which uh, um, mediates the uh, action hot, is capsaicin, a substance which opens uh, trip V1. On the other hand, um, um, menthol, a substance which is in, in, in mint tea, uh, opens trip A1 and so mediates the feeling of cold. So, I think um, uh, that with this uh, knowledge you may um, uh, think about iron channels when you eat your next hot uh, um, uh, uh, meal. So I shouldn't stop without um, pointing out once more that the original works, the discovery of the iron channels, was done in collaboration with uh, Bert Sackmann, who uh, is now in Munich, and the uh, improvement of the method, the, 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 the um, uh, description of various um, modifications of it were done together with uh, Fred Sigvers, Alain Marti, and Owen Hamill, who at that time were postdocs in our laboratory. Thank you for your attention. <웃음> 자, 멋진 강연 들려주신 네오 교수님께 다시 한번 큰 박수 부탁드리겠습니다. 네, 교수님 강연 잘 들었습니다. So thank you for your really nice talk. So I think it is really surprising that so many ion channels exist in our human body and strongly involved in many human diseases like epilepsy, the heart disease, or many the human brain disease. <웃음> 자, 오늘 어, 우리 몸 안에 이온 채널이 수백 개 이상이 존재한다는 것이 참으로 놀랍습니다. 그리고 뇌신경 세포뿐만 아니라 피부 신경 세포에서도 이러한 많은 이온 채널이 존재하며 중요한 역할을 한다는 것이 참으로 흥미롭습니다. 자, shall we start Q&A now, sir? Excuse me. So, shall we start Q&A now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 자, 그러면 이제부터 여러분들에게 질문을 받도록 하겠습니다. 자, 네오 교수님께 오늘 강연에 대해 궁금하신 점이 있으신 분들은 손을 높이 들어주세요. 참고로. 이번 기회가 아마 여러분들이 노벨상 수상자분과 직접 이야기할 수 있는 마지막 기회가 될지도 모릅니다. 자, 자신감을 가지고 손을 높이 들어 주십시오. 아, 제일 먼저 예. 특정 온도에서 열리는 이온 채널이 다르다고 말씀하셨는데 저희가 건강법으로 냉온욕을 하거든 따뜻한 물에 들어갔다 찬 물에 들어갔다 그렇게 하면은 어, 채널이 다르게 열린 거라고 생, 상상을 할수 있는데 거기에 비슷하게 뭐 고추를 먹었을 때 열리는 채널과 또그 바카를 먹었을 때 열리는 채널이 또 다르다고 하셨잖아요. 그러면 우리가 냉온욕 하는 효과나 그 음식을 통해서 이렇게 따뜻한 채널 열리는 음식을 먹거나 차가운 채널 열리는 음식을 먹었을 때 몸에서 반응한 효과가 비슷할지 여쭤보고 싶습니다. <웃음> Um, 
such channels are actually expressed in many different parts of our body where they um, have different functions, you know. Um, but it turns out that uh, those substances which we use in spices, they open the channels, but without, say, side effects. In fact, uh, some of these channels are also um, expressed in the gut and in the stomach, you know, and are used by the body to know more about the food, you know, to adjust the, the, the metabolism to the kind of food. So, so uh, by and large, I think uh, substances which are used as spices not only provide good taste, you know, but uh, as a rule are not detrimental to health, but rather support uh, body functions. Okay, thank you for your answer. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 많이 질문이 좀 해소되셨는, 되셨는지. 예. 그러면 이제 또 다음 질문하실 분 있으면 손을 높이 들어 주십시오. 전문적인 질문이 아니어도 됩니다. 예, 저쪽에 계신 여성분, 남성분. 죄송합니다. <웃음> 음, 네, 강연 너무 잘 들었어. 네, 너무 행복합니다. 어, 제가 아까 그 저기 어, 이온 채널이 우리 몸에 엄청나게 많다고 어, 말씀을 하셨는데 그 이온 채널 같은 경우에는 단백질로 구성이 되어 있는데 그 많은 그 이온 채널을 구성하는 단백질이 만들어지는 유전자가 서로 다른 곳에 있는 건지 아니면 어, 특정 그 유전자가 이온 채널을 만드는데 이렇게 많이 관여하는 부분이 있는 건지 궁금합니다. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, all cells produce their own proteins. You know, in a given cell, you or your 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 uh, DNA is in every cell. So, in principle, every cell in your body can uh, make all the proteins, but there is a whole cosmos of regulatory processes which um, cause that in some cells only certain proteins are produced, in other cells different proteins. There are also so-called housekeeping proteins which are produced in every cell. But ion channels are made wherever they are needed. So in the nerve cells, you have these voltage-dependent sodium channels and potassium channels which are made inside the uh, uh, nerve cells by the um, uh, uh, protein um, 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 machinery. In um, 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 the eyes, you have uh, the cells in the, in the photoreceptors make certain proteins to transduce the light response into into an electrical signal. 예, 감사합니다. 자, 이제 마지막 한분 정도 더 받을 시간이 잠깐 나오는데요. 예, 가운데 분. 잘 모르겠는데 이온 채널 이온 채널하고 리셉터 가는 개념하고 좀 같은 건지 비슷한 건지 뭐 설명 좀 해주실 수 있겠습니까? Ion channel and receptor. Well, uh, uh, some channels are just channels. <laughs> I mean, they say the voltage-dependent channels of the nerve, they open and close in response to voltage changes. You know? So you wouldn't call them a receptor. But other channels, for instance, this acetylcholine channel or all the channels which react, which uh, are opened by uh, neurotransmitters, they are receptors for these neurotransmitters uh, which then react upon binding of the, um, uh, of the ligand by opening a channel. Uh, so there are channel, uh, there are receptor and effector in one molecule. 네. 시간이 이제 뭐지? 예, 마지막 한번 짧게 받겠습니다. 잠시만 마이크 드리겠습니다. 
네, 그 박사님께서 연구하고 계신 이 이온 채널 부분에 있어서 어, 우리 인간의 생명 연장하고 어, 직결되는 부분이나 어, 간접적으로 연결되는 부분이 있다면 그 어떤 효과로 앞으로 생명 연장 부분하고 그 어약적인 접목이 이루어질 것인지 그 소견을 듣고 싶고 두 번째로는 그 박사님이 어, 좀더 젊은 그 시절로 돌아간다면 어, 어떤 부분에 더 연구를 하고 싶으신지 예, 그 내용 궁금합니다. 오케이. Okay. Um, can ion channels prolong your life? Good question. <웃음> uh, I mean, you need the ion channels during life, you know. Um, whether actually um, somehow they improving or 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 taking good care of ion channels whether this will prolong your life is an open question i cannot answer that you know but um, um, knowing about ion channels and um, how they work what their physiological function is is certainly good to lead a healthy life mm -hmm. The other question was, I didn't quite understand, what would I do today if I were younger? Was this a question? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think I would um, become a scientist again. <laughs> <laughs> There are so many interesting questions. I mean, as a high school student, I was fascinated by bioelectricity. Um, I used to, to, to uh, disassemble and put together radios and clocks and so on and was fascinated by the ideas that there is electricity in the body, you know. Today, um, I don't know, uh, probably as somebody who is more minded towards theoretical understanding, um, I would probably go into what's called bioinformatics discipline which tries to make use of the huge amount of data that are now available with modern sequencing techniques, you know, um, uh, say, um, uh, data which are available for the association of uh, certain variants of the, of, the, uh, of, the, of the genome with diseases and, um, and, and similar questions. 네. 아시니까 마지막 한분 더. 근데 이제 아까 계속 드렸습니다. Uh, Thank you very much for interesting lecture. My uh, question more um, maybe technical or, or maybe more fundamental. Uh, as I know in our organism a lot of different molecules and some of them are maybe like antagonists that uh, in binding open channel but uh, I know it is, um, exists some allosteric modulators and uh, in which way they control the activity of receptors. Uh, they may um, some changing uh, uh, ability to, to uh, how they regulate the signal on the allosteric graph on a biological level. Yeah. Uh, what do they do with, who is, re who is, with receptors? Who is, who is they? Who, who is they? I didn't, I didn't catch in your question. About allosteric modulators of receptors. Uh, allosteric modulators yes. of receptors. Yes. Uh, yeah. how, do the, yeah. how do they work and uh, do they... Um, uh, yeah. uh, in, in which way they uh, regulate the activity of opening or closing mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. channels? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, um, uh, say the acetylcholine receptor is a prototype of an allosterically regulated uh, channel. I mean, you, I showed that acetylcholine receptor has five subunits, you know. Uh, two subunits have binding sites for acetylcholine, but there are also binding sites for antagonists and, and so on. And uh, one has to imagine that the molecule can be basically in two states, closed or open, you know, and uh, 
uh, uh, the energy levels or the rates of transformation from one into the other one and back are um, just regulated by all the interactions of the whole complex of molecules with the allosteric regulators, you know. Mm. I mean, say, when acetylcholine binds to one of the sites, the total energy of that uh, 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 unit is increased or decreased by a certain amount. The same happens on the other side. The same happens may on allosteric regulators. And what happens in the end, how fast uh, molecule switches from one side to the other, how stable is it in one configuration or the other, depends on the interaction energies of all the ligands involved. So, so I, I'm sorry, so we have uh, some time limitation. So, so please understand these circumstances. Thank you. So, chincha. So, <laughs> <laughs> excuse me, sir. <laughs> Uh, well, there, there may be more, but it's easier and, and, and to understand it if one simplifies and just considers two states. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So, 진짜 진짜 마지막. 이번에 진짜 마지막 질문 하나 받겠습니다. 자, 저 죄송하지 이번에 하, 교복 입은 학생분에게 한번 기회를 좀 넘기도록 하겠습니다. 아까 교, 그 교수님께서 박, 박사님께서 TRP가 그 곤충의 눈에서 발견됐다고 하셨잖아요. 그래서 그 TRP가 우리 몸에서는 냉온 감각을 느끼게 해준다라고 말씀하셨는데 그러면 곤충에서 곤충의 눈에서는 어떤 역할을 하는지 궁금합니다. Well, um, the the uh, a trip channel in the eye is not temperature dependent, as far as I know. But it, um, hmm, now you are asking me <laughs> details. Um, as I said, I mean, it, it is a uh, channel permeable to um, um, uh, cations. And I must admit, I don't know exactly <laughs> <laughs> what uh, finally makes it um, makes it sensitive towards towards the light response. You know, <laughs> if you if you ask me uh, what channel mediates uh, vision in our eye, I could tell you. <laughs> <laughs> 아주 훌륭하신 학생인 것 같습니다. 이 다음에 좋은 이제 과학자가 되셔가지고 거기에 대한 메커니즘과 기능을 밝히게 되신다면 아마 이 자리에 이제 노벨상을 받으신. 강연을 하지 않을까라는 아주 훌륭한 학생 질문 감사드립니다. 예, 이온 채널에 대한 좋은 강연과 질문 감사드립니다. 자, 우리 몸 안에 존재하는 이온 채널의 연구는 인류의 질병 치료와 신약 개발을 위한 새로운 길을 제시하는 중요한 연구라는 생각이 듭니다. 그럼 뇌 과학의 역사에 대한 짧은 영상을 보신 후에 다음 강연을 이어가도록 하겠습니다. 다시 한번 큰 박수로 네오 교수님께 감사 인사드립니다.